any questions, <laughs> raise your hand. We decide what's immoral. You asked one. You asked oh, one. Oh, I didn't one. So you said, you said, you raise your hand. Okay. There you go. Brexit has failed because our government has been dominated by people who have followed an internationalist ideology. Did you say that the Enlightenment was negative um, for Europe? I'll turn it inside. Let me answer this question. Omar! He's, no, no, I don't want to kiss. I don't want to kiss. What the brother doesn't realise is that all of those crusaders in the fourth crusade were excommunicated by the pope of their own age what's the origin what's the origin of christmas uh, celebration okay the origin of christmas celebration. Yeah. What I'd like to talk about is um, a kind of reflection, really, on um, 2018 in terms of some of the kind of bigger challenges that Western Europe has, has faced. Well, just Europe in general or even the world and how those challenges have been completely uh, failed, dropped by, um, by liberal society by liberalism and its failures because really as Christians we we keep um, associating ourselves with a liberal society that that is failing itself and is drowning and as we sort of peg our, our mast to their colors as we peg our colors rather than to their mast as they drowned we drown with them and as Christians I want to offer a Christian perspective on some of the challenges that we see current in society at large. And these are all the failures of liberalism and we'll discuss that as we go forward. So the first of those failures is the migrant crisis. Uh, the migrant crisis is a failure of liberalism because uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, Trudeau in Canada, Obama and their ilk have sought to follow an internationalist ideology that sees the world as one giant economic market and into which all of us as individuals are simply batteries to an economy. And that has resulted in that as the Western civilization has given up on the idea of family, given up on the idea of children, given up on its more traditional uh, Christian, Judeo-Christian moral framework. We've stopped having the population necessary for economy. And as we know, our governments are very centered around the idea of economy. And so to replace that dwindling native population, our governments have sought instead to simply import populations from abroad, regardless of whether those populations have any connection to the Judeo-Christian roots of Europe. So Angela Merkel sends out this global invitation initially to in, in theory to the refugees of Syria but quite quickly that became an open door policy to anyone everywhere who is suffering. Now this is an unsustainable policy. It will and has resulted in social conflict and social tension and the way that our Western governments have tried to deal with the rising tensions and problems that this has caused is to simply clamp down upon the voices of protest that are speaking up quite legitimately about the consequences of just inviting everyone and his dog to come to Europe. It simply can't be done. Now, as a Christian, I'm going to upset everyone on every side. 
Because the fact of the matter is that as a Christian, my solidarity is with the church, not with the West. And many of those refugees and many of those migrants that are coming from Africa and coming from the Middle East and from the Far East are Christians. And so I would not turn my back on them, nor would I shut the door in their face. However, I also look at the example of Christ, the refugee who fled from Palestine to Egypt and was absorbed into Egyptian pagan society at a time when he was fleeing Herod. Now, that means that as a Christian, along with those injunctions in the Old Testament to do good and justice by those aliens amongst you, I can't and won't go in for any narrative that seeks to alienate or villainize refugees or migrants. Those who come here legitimately, those who come here legally, those who come here to build a home and to contribute to society should be welcomed and should be afforded every justice and every opportunity that we in the West also enjoy. However, that being said, when God in the Old Testament talks about doing justice to the alien amongst you, he doesn't in the next breath say abandon temple worship, give up Judaism, stop following the Ten Commandments or to give up your identity. And this is where I and the Liberals part company because the Liberals say that the cost of absorbing the alien amongst us is that we need to make room for them in our culture by denying our culture, by denying our history, by denying our own identity. And so we have heretical, certainly almost apostate bishops in Sweden saying that we're going to remove crosses from our churches so that they don't offend Muslim migrants. Cowards. These are cowards. Yes. They are misguided Christians who are allowing liberal politics to guide their theology rather than allowing their theology to guide their politics. We should have an immigration policy in Europe that is based upon compassion. That that compassion, its first duty are to those Christians like ourselves, those who could fit into our Judeo-Christian heritage most easily. Not simply an open door, but a door that is guarded and is selective about who you let into your house. Liberal multiculturalism has failed in the UK. And if you're watching this in any land apart from the UK, I would advise you strongly to urge your political class not to follow the failed experiment of the UK. It doesn't work here. It will not work where you live either. However, the church holds out a middle way between the xenophobic ethno-nationalists on one side who want to define the English state based upon nothing but the colour of your skin and the ridiculous open door policy of the Liberals on the other, which is working against our society in the sense that it cannot work. And it cannot work because as we've seen, Angela Merkel yeah. after inviting the whole world to Germany, yeah. realized that this policy can't work in Germany and is now demanding that the rest of the EU absorb the excess that Germany cannot absorb. As Christians, what we need to do is to offer an alternative, to offer an alternative that is based upon absorbing those populations that would fit into the Judeo-Christian heritage of the land. 
And this was being offered by numerous bishops, by numerous cardinals in the church, particularly a cardinal in Italy whose name I've forgotten, um, who offered a similar thing in Germany before I die. Liberalism is not working, and Christians who simply go along with a liberal form of Christianity, where they define their theology according to the paradigms of liberal politics, will not work for the church either. We are importing populations that are hostile to the church and that seek to persecute the church. The church. Instead, the church. we Which should church? encourage. Church are you talking about? We should the encourage church. Christian populations Christian churches. and support the migration of Christian populations, particularly those persecuted in the Muslim world, such as in Pakistan yeah. and the Middle East. That's right. For those of you eager to ask questions, yeah. and what did you Christians do? What did you Christians do to other people? So. You persecuted people. So you Christians have persecuted Unfortunately, people for centuries. Unfortunately, that's not the topic that I'm talking about. Persecuted people for centuries. Topic, so topic. executed people for centuries. Don't give him airtime. Blind witches. JC, don't give him airtime. For centuries. Oh, well. You so, don't like the truth, do you? The prison system the in the United ever. Kingdom is collapsing. And it has been taken over Jesus, by the on, prisoners. By and it has been taken over by the prisoners because liberal society yeah. has washed their hands of prisoners. As Christians, we are commanded by Christ to remember those who are in prison, particularly our brothers them, and sisters radical, who are in prison. What, remembering them we is can't not have any radical action, is it? With remembering those on prisoners. the extreme right who have the attitude that prisoners simply deserve everything that they get, and those liberal do gooders on the other side who seem to think that the best way to run a prison system is to treat it like an expression of Butlin's, a holiday camp. The prison system You've in the UK been has been taken over yeah. by drug pushers and Islamists. Yeah. Islamists are recruiting and drug pushers are selling their drugs. And ironically, those two groups are often working together side by side. Really? So much for Islam. You sound like Tommy so much for you sound the like Tommy Robinson. Not a Christian, you sound like Tommy so, Robinson. What as Christians must we do when we see that our prison system has been taken over by the prisoners because it has been underfunded, undermanned, and has been followed, has been governed by the ideology of liberalism that seems to think that the best way to run a prison system is to turn it so into what are you a holiday do with the prisons? camp. Come on, get on with it. So, the prison system you're going to start executing of this country people. needs In the name of Jesus, discipline. you're going to start executing people. It needs to have discipline imposed upon it. Executions, that's and the way Executions. to impose that discipline is to remove, is to remove, is to remove, is to remove those laws, those human rights laws that prevent us from imposing discipline on those prisons. Because it's those laws that are preventing us death penalty. from smashing back the, death penalty. the drug gangs. It is those laws yeah, yeah. that are preventing you us want. You want from smashing oh, 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 the Islamists don't touch me, who are friend. using the prison systems you know, you as like, recruiting you don't like gangs. Just suck it up. Liberalism <laughs> suck it up. has failed. <laughs> we need Sorry, a return no, to muscular Christianity. A Christianity that has a sense of itself and a sense of its own discipline. You know you hear? We you need to, to smash to the, the gangs the that have taken over our prison. Yeah. Because only by smashing yeah. those gangs, Goodness. by breaking them, by snapping their control of the prison system, 
Can we create so an environment in relevant, which please. prisoners yeah, yeah, have the yeah. best opportunity yeah, yeah. to reform? What, yeah. I, I, to I become citizens yeah. that can contribute yeah. to their society. Yeah. The current system is neither compassionate yeah. nor is it punishment. And it needs to be a combination of both. Bring back the death penalty, yes? Please notice that my atheist heckler has characterised my argument in a way that at no point have I sought to express. I want to talk about another failure of liberalism. The failure of Brexit. Brexit has failed because our government has been dominated by people who have followed an internationalist ideology for more than 60 years and they cannot think of a world that does not have internationalist structures like the UN and like the EU. And so they have sought to undermine a popular vote in which the majority of the people of the United Kingdom voted democratically and peacefully Peacefully, in the largest democratic experiment of our time to leave the European Union. And yet the establishment and the sore losers, the Ramonas, have sought to undermine that democratic vote by demanding a people's vote. So I ask them, if you are asking for a people's vote now, what was the first referendum? If that was not a people's vote, when more than half the population of the UK voted, how can you now demand another vote? And if you demand another vote and get it, and you win, why can Brexiteers like myself not to demand a third referendum. You're not demanding a people's vote. You're demanding a loser's vote. Call it by its proper name. Brexit can only be stopped by a general election in which a elected party standing on a mandate to overturn the referendum wins that election. And that is the only democratic way that we can get ourselves out of this crisis that we have walked ourselves into because David Cameron asked a binary question to a much more complicated issue. Nonetheless, the referendum was won democratically by Brexit and it is incumbent upon every government until they win an election on a mandate that says otherwise Is this in the Bible then? to uphold that referendum. Was Jesus a but as Christians, what should our view of Brexit be? Our view of Brexit should be the view so what's, that we have what's, what's of the Christian every view government. Of Brexit? What's the Christian view of Brexit? How Paul what would Jesus have done? Or anti what would Jesus the church have done, it is. Jesus is a Palestinian. The European Union has demonstrated over its existence that it is anti-Christian. Yes. It seeks to establish a European identity based upon a liberal, civic identity and not upon our Judeo-Christian heritage. They had the opportunity to recognize the Christian contribution to Europe in the most recent European constitution. Hang people. And they refused to do so. They refused to do so. Don't give him air time, JC. As Christians, we cannot give our support 
to an organization of any government that seeks to oppose the church, which church? the gospel, which church? and the there kingdom of God. Christian church. And so there isn't a single we Christian must church. oppose the European Union. Another failure of liberalism that we need to discuss yeah, we need to discuss is the environmental crisis your father must have been very strict that we you. see <laughs> unfolding in front of us on a daily basis. Did your father over chastise you at all? The fact, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that we are addicted to a culture of consumerism that is quite literally destroying destroying our consumers. environment. And a mobile phone? Yeah. Is destroying our environment. You're a hypocrite, it's sir. Something You're a consumer that yourself. That needs to go front You're and centre of our political you know concerns. The overuse of plastic is something that is quite literally going to work its way up and the worst, in the, the food chain, and you will eat oxygen. the poison that we are putting into the environment. And if he's, a, Christian if he's a follower faith, of the God of love, why is he so And angry? the book of yes, Genesis yes, says that man was placed over creation uh, to cultivate it, why not? to be God's vice regent over it, to use it, and to dominate it. We Christians, you're not a Christian. For the longest time, you're a Christian gangbanger. Tapped into the idea <laughs> of dominating the environment, <laughs> but in the face down, of overwhelming <laughs> scientific <laughs> evidence, <laughs> we need to tune in to that Christian narrative that says that we are also to cultivate and to care for the environment that God has placed us in charge of. Really? The Patriarch of Constantinople, mm. for his entire Patriarch, it's has spoke about <laughs> the need to defend the environment. Yeah, we don't call it Constantinople anymore. Pope it's a Francis capital. has also <laughs> spoke <laughs> of this concern. What's the name of the Turkish As Christians, we need to challenge the capitalism, the consumerism, and its addiction to those ways of life built upon the idea of the individual consumer that is destroying our families and destroying the environment. Okay, so consuming on a group level is okay then. It's just the destroying on the group level is impossible. Notice, notice, we get a pause and for a change in your battery. I'm going to round up and then I'm going to give all my hecklers a chance to ask a question. See if they're mad enough. So, we have the failure of liberalism. Notice, even when I'm not speaking about Islam, how the Muslim Dawa team behave. Notice how the Muslim Dawa team behave. This is their failure. The failure of their deen. Liberalism has failed Western society on the migrant crisis. Liberalism has failed our society with the prison crisis. Liberalism has failed with the Brexit crisis. Liberalism has failed on the environmental crisis. And yet, Western society like dogs returning to their vomit, return to liberalism, thinking that the same horse will have a new trick for old problems, and it won't. We need to have a different worldview, because a different worldview will give us different answers. The Muslims and Islam are desperate to fill the vacuum 
by lib that liberalism is creating. But we, as Europeans, do not need to look far to find a different and better answer. We only need to look to our past, our Judeo-Christian heritage, the once made us great nations and can make us great nations again. I don't call you to that weak form of Christianity you see on the BBC. I call you to that muscular faith of our forefathers, our ancestors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those that want to ask questions, now I'll take them. Um, I, I don't know if I missed uh, quoted you. Did you say that the Enlightenment was negative um, for Europe? Yeah, yeah, it, it was bad. I'll turn it into and that's the Enlightenment in France. Oh. Okay, so uh, let me answer this question. Omar, 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 relax, 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 drink less coffee, drink less coffee. So the question was, for those that couldn't hear it, no, no, I don't want to kiss, I don't want to kiss, I don't want to kiss, I've been sexually assaulted, you know you're holding a hand, shut up, calm down, calm down, ask him questions, so let me ask, let me answer, let me answer, let me answer, the question for those that couldn't hear it yes. was do I think the Enlightenment was bad? The ball's in touch. The Enlightenment <laughs> was a mixed bag in European history. Yeah. It necessarily tackled some of the superstitions and the archaic traditions of the church of its time and freed up much space in the terms of technological development. However, in placing scientific and rational knowledge at the forefront of our culture, it did so at the abandonment of morality. And the question that occupied Europe was not whether we should, but whether we could. And so Europe went on to and has gone on to do many technological advancements that are immoral, such as abortion, such as euthanasia. Abortion started with the Renaissance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Enlightenment needs a reflection by European society to take from it that which was good and to drop from it that which is harmful and what has been harmful has been the abandonment of our judeo-christian heritage the christian church was never anti-science next question raise your hand who, who decides what's immoral are you asking a question no i'm not any questions raise your hand who decides what's immoral you asked one you asked one so you said you said raise your hand okay there you go you're saying that you believe in brexit right yes and then you said we european Yes. When you say we European, do you include that brother with you? Well, my identity is in Christ. Not oh. In my... oh. Oh. When you said we oh. European, let me address that question. He's not including you. He's not including you. So he asks a question. He's not including you. 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 He's not including for those of you that were paying attention, I was making an appeal to Europeans to embrace their Judeo-Christian heritage. What is that church? What is the that church? assumption of that statement is that those Europeans are not Christians. So I am appealing to them to become Christians because when you join the church, 
you join a global community, an international community, a community that is made up of Europeans like me, of Africans, like my brother, and Indians, subcontinentals, and my brother. I'm not ashamed to profess it. I'm a European, but you are Europeans. We join the church. We join a confederation of ethnicities and nationalities who are united in being disciples of Christ. So being European and speaking to Europeans does not exclude those from the church who are disciples of Christ because the church is bigger than Europe. The church exists in Africa for 2,000 years. The church existed in India for 2,000 years. He wants to come to the church existed in the Middle East for 2,000 years. The church existed in Europe for 2,000 years. These things are not the same. Notice, notice the manners of the Dawati. Notice the manners of the Dawati. So, this is going. Let's go. He's got a question. What's the question? No, no, you. It was a question. It was a question. Did you ask the Christian morality during the Crusades? Byzantine. They went. Yeah, the Byzantine motherfuckers. They went down to the Middle East to fight the Turks, right? They got bored of fighting Muslims. Say, we don't want to fight no Muslims anymore. There's no money yeah, in it, right? Yeah. Then they sacked Constantinople. Where was the Christian morality you speak so highly of? So they did the first crusade. Let's deal with the crusades and particularly the abject and complete failure of the fourth. Crusade, which every Christian, even Christians at the time, condemned as a betrayal. What the brother doesn't realize is that all of those crusaders in the Fourth Crusade were excommunicated by the Pope of their own age. They had betrayed their vows and they were excommunicated. However, the fall of Constantinople is mourned by Christians as a failure, as a betrayal of Christian love. Pope John Paul II, when he visited Constantinople and the Church of Hagia Sophia knelt in the Church of Hagia Sophia as a sign of mourning at the cost that the Fourth Crusade had befallen upon our brothers and sisters in the East. Constantinople will, God willing, be in the hands of the Christians again. Will once again resume to the sound of the divine liturgy. I think you mean next question. And then we have the Native Americans and the Aborigines. We're going to take Australia and North America. You know that most of the artworks made during the Renaissance were religious based. Okay, so the question was, for those that couldn't hear it, do I know that most of the artwork, most of the artwork that was based in the Renaissance was religious art? I have no statistics to say what quantity of art was produced in the Renaissance that was religious. However, 
What I do know is that some of the greatest masterpieces of European heritage, my heritage as a European, was produced by the church and is open for all people to enjoy. This is our contribution to civilization and it is something that we as Christians should be rightly proud of. Right. Next okay. question. Are you, are you, you're Indian. Why the church are closing? What's the question? Why the church are closing? And the church are selling the church. Any questions? The Christians are selling the whole church. You want to open Istanbul and you're selling the church. Sorry. Christmas celebration. I'm really sorry, I can't hear you. Why the What's the origin? What's the origin of Christmas celebration? Okay. The origin of Christmas celebration. Yeah. So the origin of the Christian celebration. Christmas. It's a really good question, very timely. Since just in case you don't know, it's still Christmas. Yeah. Lots of people seem to think that Christmas happens on the 25th of December and that's it. It actually goes on. Yes. Depending on which discipline, it goes on either for 12 days or goes right on until the early part of February. Bet most of you didn't know that, that's a free fact. Now you can show off at your next New Year's party. So, as to the origin, the origin, the short story, the short story for this brother is that it is a Christianization of a Roman pagan festival called the Invincible Sun that happened on the 25th of December. And as the, as the Roman Empire became Christians, the Christians simply decided to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on that day. Why? Because the theme of Christmas resonated well with that culture. Jesus Christ is the Father's unconquerable Son who conquers death and conquers the darkness of sin. And as the Son conquered the light and signified the end of winter, so the birth of Christ signifies the end of sin's reign over us, our freedom in Christ from sin and from the tyranny of the devil and the world. As Christians, we are not ashamed of this. As Christians, we admit it openly. It is no critique of our faith to point out that which we freely admit. Christians celebrate Christ's crucifixion and resurrection and from that we develop the tradition to celebrate other Christian parts of Christ's life. And it made sense when converting the calendar of pagans that we took their religious dates that were already public holidays and use them for ourselves. So it means you celebrate pagan religion then? No, my friend. It means we celebrate Christ's birth. Pay attention. Next question. Christos Anestire. Okay. So, is that a question? Yes. Right, what's the question? What do you know about Easter Bunny? Okay. Easter Bunny, maybe. So, the next question is about the word Easter. I can't claim to be an expert on the history of words. However, I know that when Christians converted my own ancestors, the Saxons, the Scandinavians, there you go, there you go. they took the language of those peoples, such God. as Easter, Easter. and, and they used it as the name for their own festivals. But let's be clear, the festival of Easter 
is not is. the same as the festival of the pagan god. Exactly. Why do we know this? And this is where I'm going to show that Rajiv doesn't know as much as he thinks he does. Hey, 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 hey. Because <laughs> Bob the, Lion, no, the dating of Easter was decided at the Council of Constantinople in 325. And he was connected to the Jewish Passover moon. And so that date of Easter is dictated by something that predates the conversion of both the Anglo-Saxons and the Scandinavians and therefore the adoption of the word Easter. Rajiv needs to do more than watch a YouTube video and read a Dawa book. Next question. No, don't give him any time. It's not a debate. Next question. You've just allowed him to preach. Oh, are we all finished? He's not actually answering questions. Any more questions? So you don't know about Easter. You don't know about Easter. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go get a drink. No, he's not really. And then I'll be back to talk about something else. Thank you, boy. Merry Christmas. God bless. And if you are celebrating on the 1st of January, Happy, Happy New Year! Christian's best, best what activity, about running as usual. Rajiv, you'll, 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 you'll have your chance to be baby. You'll have your chance once you've had a drink. You'll have your chance. What's more you'll have your, you'll have your chance. Contact and contact. God bless you. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas.